Good St. Lucie Mayor. I'm Teresa Aronson from the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce. It is our pleasure, our honor to do this event every, se every second Friday of the month right here in Council Chambers at City Hall. It's free. It's open to the public. We sweeten the pot with pastries and coffee courtesy of uh, Silver Platter Entrees or Culinary Village. If you'd like to come on down, we'd love to have you. We start the show uh, with our sponsor. That's the only way we can do great programming like this. So today's sponsor is the one, the only Seacoast Bank, one of the true local banks here on the Treasure Coast. And I'm so excited to have as our guest one of my old friends, Carissa Zerga. Good Welcome. Morning. Good morning. Welcome, yeah. Carissa. Are you are happy? Because I feel like with Seacoast, it's usually whoever drew the short straw has to come up and do that. Am I correct? Sometimes that may happen. Yes, I thought so. <laughs> Nobody likes to do local TV with me. Um, yeah, they, they know how to get me willed into this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about what we were going to uh, speak about. I do want to mention Seacoast Bank really is a local bank. You guys started right here on the Treasure Coast, but you're branching out, right? Absolutely. Um, actually, this year here we just um, recently announced another acquisition, mm -hmm. which we're excited about. Um, it is a great First Green Bank, and we are actually have seven locations. So we're going to fill our Orlando area a little bit with six of those locations, and then one down in Fort Lauderdale. So we're expanding our footprint, which is really important to us. Um, you know, we're focused as Florida's bank, and we want to make sure that we can serve all our cus customers in the footprint without any gaps in between. And how long have you guys been in a, a bank here? In um, over 90 years. 90 yeah. years. That's a long time. It is a very long time. And you guys have always community involved. You come, whenever Seacoast is involved in something, you come in a sea of teal. There's lots of you supporting one another, which is great to see because I feel like you do support one another. But most of you have been with the bank for a really long time, right? Absolutely. We have a lot of longevity, especially right here in St. Lucie County. Myself, I've been with Seacoast over 22 years. Yeah. Yeah. And some of my um, peers that are out here are in the 20 year mark as well. So it must be a great place to work. Absolutely. Now, what, what kind of specials do you have for residents um, right now? Um, we have great opportunity to come over and switch to Seacoast. We have a $100 incentive if you bring your uh, banking relationship over. And then obviously, um, we look at the full relationship. So yeah. we want to be able to help you personally, business, lending. Um, so we have great rates, opportunities. Um, the key thing is come in and talk with us and let us build a relationship with you so that we can meet your needs. And how do you consider your rates? Like right now, what's prime? Prime right now is at 5%. Ugh. So, yes, it is creeping up. <laughs> but... <laughs> Did I say that out loud? <laughs> you said that out loud. <laughs> oh, <my bad. laughs> yeah, it is creeping up, but, um, you know, it, there's still decent rates to lend money, but we also, with that being said, you know, interest rates to invest are creeping up a little bit too, so that's a plus to offset it. Okay, so your CDs and all that kind of stuff are paying a little bit more right now. Yes. That's great. What, what's your CD special? Um, right now, you can look at um, two years, about 2.25 APY. Mm, it's not too bad. That's not bad at all. I mean, for a while, there was like a half one if you were lucky, and that was Very an introductory lucky. <laughs> Very lucky. So that's kind of nice. Yes. All right, and commercial lending, I always try to tell, because we're the Chamber of Commerce, so we really deal with businesses, and I always try to tell them, borrow money before you need your money. I agree with you. If yes. something comes up, you want to be prepared, and you know, we have small business lenders right here in our market. You know them. Most of the people here in the community know yeah. them, Vanessa Franz and Dana McSweeney. Of course. And um, that's what they do, and there's great rates out there for lines of credits and also for uh, real estate if you're looking to expand. Yeah, it, so that's always something I like to leave my business owners with. Borrow money, get a line of credit before you need that line of credit because by the time you need it, it's too late. You probably won't qualify anymore. Yeah, sometimes, um, you know, you think cash flow is good, but you never know what will come up. You never know what the few, but you know what? I need to borrow my own advice and get a line of, for the chamber. <laughs> now that I we think definitely about can it, help you yeah, with that. That comes with board <laughs> approval and everything else, so yeah. yeah. But very good. Well, thank you for being our sponsor this month. I really do appreciate it. Oh, and I appreciate all of my Seacoasters. They always support in such great ways. You guys are on, uh, probably you have representation on 90% of the boards in our community, which we appreciate, and you're always willing to sponsor and be a part of the process. So. That's why it's a great place to work as well because uh, the company yeah. does get allow us to give time to do that. And so you get to find a passion within your job Absolutely. as well. Okay. Well, great stuff. Thank yeah, you, Chris. Well, thank you. Not too bad, right? Not at all. <laughs> but we'll be right back and we'll be here with, of course, the mayor of Port St. Lucie, Greg Oravec.
We're already hyped. I Mike's know. gotta get them hyped. I know it. Welcome, welcome back to Coffee with the Port St. Lucie Mayor. I'm Teresa Aronson from the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce. Sorry about that. Don't forget we do this event every second Friday of the month right here at Council Chambers at City Hall. It starts at 8.30. It's free. It's open to the public. We throw in culinary village pastries and coffee. And on some weeks, the mayor himself is doing a fundraiser. So if you want to come early, we'll let you know when those weeks are. Please welcome our guest of honor, the one, the only mayor of the beautiful city of Port St. Lucie. Gregory Orovec. Welcome. Thank you. That's a, very, that's a very long intro. It is a very long intro. There's always a lot of information I'm trying to get out there. So, And I wanted to talk about your breakfast because you've been doing it a lot lately and it's for a good cause. And so um, if you'll share with us what that's for and if you do it again, we'll get it on our calendar as well. Thank you very much. We are trying to help out with the Santia Fakita Memorial Scholarship. So I think as a lot of us know, we lost a couple of girls earlier this year in a head-on collision off of Okeechobee, and uh, we're, we're, we're devastated to lose both. And uh, Santia's, she's family here. Her mom and, and sister work for the city, and then her father, Stuart, is a, is a good friend, and he is also the proprietor of Nature's Keeper, prominent landscape firm in town. And uh, I think they've done they, they've processed the grief and a terrible situation, this tragedy, as constructively as I could possibly imagine. Yeah, they've, I don't know. How did they do it? Mm -mm. Um, but you know, just to lose a to lose a child. I don't. You know, I have three. So uh, just putting yourself into into their shoes, uh, it's terrible. But they're trying to deal with it constructively. Uh, Santia wanted to be uh, in the teaching uh, profession, and They've worked with IRC to set up a scholarship, and you know, just whatever your cause may be, IRC, the foundation, will work with you. And if you raise fifty thousand dollars, they will fully endow a scholarship forever and per perpetuity, as mm -hmm. we like to say, and for twenty five hundred a year. And if you can get up to the hundred thousand dollar level, you get to uh, bestow or convey. Uh, for her, there's a number of different words we could yeah, use to yes. describe it. Uh, award, tomato, tomato. award, mm -hmm. uh, five thousand dollars a year in scholarships forever. And when you think about how to deal with loss constructively, I like to think about all the change that that scholarship may effect over time, because maybe it's going to help someone. It will help someone. It'll help several someones get mm -hmm. into college. And if they go into the teaching profession, how many lives will they change? So it's really, it's you know, it's potentially exponentially changing, and maybe it's world changing. And uh, we're over fifty thousand now. Oh, fantastic! So every little bit helps. So you can come to breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> or you know, you can give directly to the IRSC Foundation and just put a memo in there that's for the Santia Fakita Memorial Scholarship. Uh, but this is something that I hope to do with our many other nonprofits in town because I really like the idea of rather than doing a fundraiser and then giving all the money away, I really like the idea of the endowed scholarships that you know are there forever. Yeah, I Big think that's fan. a great, great cause. And I do, IRSC is very generous with that and uh, they do a great job with scholarships and distributing them, making sure people take advantage of that. So are you gonna try to do it pretty much every month that we do this I show? I think it, it, it flows naturally into, okay. the, into the event. So we're gonna start adding that to all of our marketing as well, that they can come in early for um, breakfast. All right, and, and then we'll, we'll work on causes together. Yeah, yeah, and we'll get to 100,000 with um, Santia and then Maybe we'll work on different causes. There's always the Young Floridian too. I don't. I don't yeah, let's do. Well, yeah, let's. We'll do that and uh, scholarship program since the '85. So we have a Bill Sher. He was a longtime employee here through yeah. the Rotary. That they have a scholarship fund. So there's there's a couple. You know, we could always do different causes too. We could let's do going. beautification and we, we appreciate everyone's support. Yeah. So what's going on? I feel like I haven't seen you in a long time. I don't like you when I only see you once a month. I know. So what's happening we at the chamber? We see each other a little bit more. You know, we got a lot going on. We just opened up our Seven Gables house. We're booking tours, activities, and excursions for the general public. Is there, there. Is there a grand reopening or? Yep. Do, do, well, by the time this airs, we'll already have done. Okay, it. but for everybody here. For everybody here, it's uh, July 30th. It's uh, Monday, July 30th, and we got the big tent, and we have uh, representatives from the Slay family who built the house. It's called the Seven Gables because there were seven daughters. Oh wow! And uh, so we have representation from the Slay family is going to be there. 
and then uh, the so repo. One of the daughters is that, that what it is? Yeah. Uh, uh, official uh, mayor business. Don't nobody panic, but he's going to handle that. And then the Regal family who donated the house, they were the taxidermists that occupied the house right before they donated it to the city of Fort So it's Pierce. not because the roof has seven gables? No, it is. There are seven gables. Oh, but each gable is was for, for a daughter? A daughter. Wow. Yeah, the seven daughters. And there were sons? And they all or lived there. All no, there were sons, oh, okay. too. Um, one of them was called, uh, he was a teacher, and I can't remember. I wish your aunt was here, because Helen would know. But this is like back in the old days when you had Hunk. a lot of kids, I they guess. They called him Hunk or Handsome or one of those things, and I was just like, Okay. Wow. So uh, you really have to grow into that name, otherwise. You, I feel like it comes with expectations funny, that I don't want to live way. up to. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's tough. So, uh, so we're excited nature about that. Nature versus nurture. I don't know. We'll have to explore that further. We should do a trivia question later, though, because the, the Seven Gables house was uh, built by the slave family, Seven Gables for seven sisters. How many kids total? I think there were nine. Nine. So how many how many children were in your family? Four. Four. That's a lot. All right. Too, who actually. can beat Who can beat four out there? Um, oh. What do you got, Dr. Jack? Eight. 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 Mr. Gravesand? Yes. Ten. Ten. Who can, who can, who's in double digits? How many you got? Eleven. Ooh, eleven. Eleven. Can anyone beat eleven? I feel like you're just trying to one-up him. Yeah. He said ten, and I'm like, yeah. I'm going to be like twelve. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My mom was one and nine. And, one and uh, nine? The family picnics are the best when you got a family that big, because you can always field multiple teams. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of people. Thanksgiving gets to be a little crazy, though. Gives me anxiety. That is set up a tent, like a chamber yeah, event. Yeah, it was yeah. probably like the Seven Gables grand opening, re-grand opening, re happening on July 30th, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So oh, seven daughters, yeah. Seven daughters. So the Regal family's going to be there, and then uh, the house was one other thing, and we'll do a trivia question. Um, when we, we do questions, I'll ask that trivia question on what the house functioned as other than a taxidermist in the home of the slaves. It's a hard one. But Brothel? You go, oh, you just gave away the tree. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, oh, yeah, sorry yeah. about that. Thanks. It's in Fort Pierce. It's not like... Oh, that's messed yeah. up. <laughs> it was oh, a, I, didn't even go, I wasn't even oh, on that level. Okay. Yeah. Where's the camera? Mayor Hudson. Yes. I was not even thinking like that. It's <laughs> no. Carissa. It's not me. She knows better. Sun, Sunrise City. We, you know, we, we love... We love. Yeah, it was a brothel, but it, that served a very important purpose for all the sailors that came in. <laughs> um, for, all right. <laughs> this is the Tris Aronson show. <laughs> I believe back then brothels included dancing, hand-holding, and long Let's conversations. Let's just shut this <laughs> down right now. <laughs> And we're back. Yes, yeah, very good. <laughs> Editing is a wonderful. All right, this is the NC-17 version. Yes. What do you got going on? Uh, I'm speechless. <laughs> All right. Well, for another event, yeah. Just for here, that it, by the time the show airs, it'll probably be too late. Uh, we have a little play ball event. It's a partnership. Uh, between cities, the U.S. Conference of Mayors, and National League Baseball, oh. where we're celebrating America's pastime, baseball. We want to especially make sure that we introduce kids to baseball. Obviously, it's a fun way mm -hmm. to get exercise and stay healthy. But uh, team sports are special in that they teach us about how to succeed in, in life. So, uh, And as you know, the Mets and all of the leagues that we have in the city, baseball is a big part of who we are. It's it a big is. it's a big part of the, the fabric of our community. And our economic makeup. Exactly. And you know, so we have a strategic plan. I'm sure you've heard me say it before. We have seven strategic goals in there. You know, we're just it's pretty straightforward. You know what I mean? You you do know what I mean. It's very straightforward. We want to be a safe, beautiful, prosperous city for all people. And then underneath that vision we have seven goals. One of them is culture, nature, and fun activities. Mm -hmm. and that's something that you want, that's something all of our citizens want, and that's something that we want to facilitate and help make happen. So when we see an opportunity where there's crossover, where it's a big part of who we are, where it does impact the, the economics and the economy of, of St. Lucie County, mm -hmm. where we can have uh, celebrate our culture and fun, that's a great event. It's happening Thursday, July 26th. And it's a meet and greet. It's, there's a parade, there's a game, the kids will actually have uh, Activities where they'll have the radar gun out there pitching, and they'll have the they'll be on the bases. You know they'll be doing the speed to see how fast they can get around the bases. Hmm. Who should we put up from the chamber? Who looks fast? You know Finkel looks fast. Is Eric here? Uh, yeah, he's low on the ground. He's uh... Oh, she's really, what is going on with her? That's a compliment in racing. <laughs> Does she have her mean girl name badge on? What That's is going on here? He's very fit right now. I mean, he is, he's got great air. All right, th this is better. He's buff. 
<laughs> yeah, Eric is, he's looking pretty good. Yeah. He's wearing, you know, he's wearing tight shirts to show it off, you know? <laughs> See, I wouldn't that. But he's very fit. You're right. I think he might do. All right. So we'll put, we'll put him in for the chamber. Okay. Who are you putting up? I'm going to have to uh, review our employee files. I like to be scientific in my approach, very fact-based. Being scientific, I might want to pick Mary Craig because she runs every day. <laughs> I don't know if you know that about her, but she still runs like five miles every day. I believe it. You look at her, she looks light on her feet. I know it. And do you yeah. want to share your age or no? She might actually be able to fly, you know, if she gets up enough speed and puts her arms out. Also low to the ground. <laughs> so that's good, the play ball event. And in time for when it actually occurs, we want to start uh, promoting it right now that on Saturday, September the 15th from 8 to 11 at Sand Hill Crane Park, we are going to have a tree giveaway. Yes. And you know, we are on a tree challenge in Port St. Lucie. We want to plant a tree for every one of you, our citizens. So that's about 189,000 trees. And uh, we're going to help you do it. We're going to give you your choice of uh, four trees for free. I Let love me see. These one, two, yep, four. Yep. A Japanese blueberry. I don't know what it is. It's a very handsome tree. There is one right out in front of your botanical gardens. Okay. And it has a very nice full canopy, but it's it's kind of a mid-sized tree. It's not a large shade tree like an oak tree. It's the next size down. So if you would think of a large ligustrum uh, tree, it would be a good would be a good uh, replacement for that in that in that same size size range. And ligustrum seem to be getting some type of disease. If you have one, if you see them in the medians, some of the heads are dying back. So it's always good to have biodiversity, get some different species out there. If you've, you're from South Florida, you know if you have all one type of palm tree, if if you get uh, yellow lethal uh, lethal yellowing yeah. disease, boom. Your whole, your whole skyline. And I know from. this is kind of your area of expertise. Does it actually produce blueberries? Are they edible? Uh, they do not produce blueberries that you buy from the store. Okay. Uh, but Florida is a producer of blueberries. Yep. Just for the record. And gumbo limbo, I assume it does not. But it's like a little stuff. blueberry bush. Gumbo limbo? Gumbo limbo? No, that's, that's a beautiful tree, and they grow quite large, but they're really known for their showy bark. Oh. So it's a red-orange trunk that also the bark kind of papers away from it. Not to be confused, ma'am, with the Melaleuca, also known as a paper tree. Those are terrible. You want to rip those out. They came from like Australia to drain our swamps. Oh, it's, in a all long, it's an invasive tree, that one? Yeah, along with Brazilian peppers. Brazilian peppers, Melaleuca, mm -hmm. and then the good old Australian pine, also known as ironwood. Those are your, those are the top. If, there, if you went to the post office and there were invasive exotic plants in there, or mm -hmm. trees, trees. Because old world climbing fern. That would be on there too. But for trees, that'd be on there. Okay. And that concludes the uh, botanical portion of this. The biological event. section of our, yes. our uh, Dr. Greg but you, you were you're trying to get today. through, and as I do, I went into the weeds. That's okay. And a weed is just a plant that's in the wrong place, isn't it? <laughs> he's, he's going into the weeds about weeds. <laughs> <laughs> Green buttonwood, excellent native, and Dehoon holly. Dehoon, Dehoon hollies are tough, but all right, we said we were going to move on. Moving on. Moving on. Do you want to do questions, or do you have something else you want to share with us? I don't, I, I don't know. We didn't get to, you were making all We were cooking. So oh, I'm, what man, public works we really got in here. So household hazardous waste collection day. The so, best day. Of so all year. those dangerous vats that you have in your garage, people, it's time to get them out of there. And really, I'm speaking to myself, so <laughs> don't, don't take it personally. Yeah, I'm in the same I have room. like uh, 22 gas containers in my garage. 22? No, not really, but I got oh. several, okay. and uh, it's dangerous. Yes. And so this happens at our public works complex, okay. and it'll be Saturday, October 13th, 8 to 12. And there's a list online that you can get of the hazardous materials. We're not accepted. Are they taking paint? No. Not, ex not accepted. Paint, well, but okay. Related. So this is this is important, and especially with the water-based paint. I mean, you know this. You can just take the, the the lid off and let it dry, and then you can dispose of it. And Have you can a nice buy a drying day. agent, yeah, that you can put in at, at Home Depot. No sharps, no needles. Sharps are needles. Uh, oh. Tires, no, no tires. No explosives. No, please, no bio, biohazard. Contain containers larger than five gallons. Oh, I'm gonna have to check that. Explosives and flares. All right, perfect. This list was created by risk boom. management. I yes. see that. Yeah, things that go boom, not allowed. Perfect. All right, let's turn it over to Questions? our audience. 
Okay, uh, Mar Oh, look how motivated she was. Maybe we'll go to her second. She looks a little dangerous. Let's go to Dr. She's Jack. She's going to have follow-up last month. Yeah. Whoever asked the question, I don't remember yeah. who it was. I don't want to point them out, but they asked like five. Right, and that's why there's a one-question rule. Yes, there's a one-question rule, Dr. Jack, but I You know, if they dig Dr. in for Jack. three or four, you kind of know that they're they're kind of dangerous and looking for trouble. Actually, it's it's not a question, it's a clarification. Oh, well, see, there's no advertising in this show. <laughs> I think he said a compliment, but he might have changed yeah. his No, no, he went to clarification. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you mentioned Melaleuca. There's 30, 300 different species of Melaleuca. Oh. One that's very oh, popular and very successful here in Port St. Lucie is the, the red... Uh, the tree that has a, a red flower to it, it's a melaleuca tree. But the, the, the one you're referring to that has a white blossom uh, does create a lot of pollen and was brought into uh, South Florida to absorb water in, in the Everglades, and that is nasty. But there are, there are melaleuca trees like the alternifolia that's very, very healthy. So we have another biologist in the audience. Well, you know, I wasn't going with the genus and species. Thank I was you going for with that. the common. So not answer. all melaleuca is bad. Just he, the one with the white flowers. Okay. He, he has a doctor. In I don't front know of where you're going, Mark. Now, you know. All the hands were over here. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, Good morning. The question I have, please, is um, with the election coming up and all the different signs that's not being put up all over Port St. Lucie, on public property and private property. What is the rule of thumb as far as that is concerned? Is Port St. Lucie getting paid for those signs being put up on public properties? Uh, and then the removal of these things after the election. That's Please. all you. All right, so are we getting paid? I mean, no, no candidate's making it rain on the city yeah. for uh, the right to put in signs. But there is a, there is a small fee associated with uh, a sign permit. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a bond that candidates have to file to ensure that the signs are picked up. But really, when we, we break down signs, there's a difference between single family residential and the commercial. And so our enforcement activities are really focused on vacant lots. And uh, right that, that's the biggest one, because believe it or not, some probably well-intentioned candidates and or supporters of candidates We'll throw them up any, any place they get the chance. Mm -hmm. And you have to have property owner permission. But when it comes down to a single family home, we have a code and you know, we talk to people about it. But at the end of the day, that's political free speech. It's the most protected speech in, in, our, in the land. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was recently a Supreme Court ruling that said if you have to read a sign to regulate it, that is unconstitutional because it's, it's content-based regulation, and that's, that's the highest hurdle to get over on the regulation of free speech. You know, we don't like to regulate free speech in America. We want you to have as much so freedom as possible. have different rules based on what the sign says, so like realtors get a pass, and so it made it difficult for some businesses, but yeah, it, signs are all considered signs. If you have different rules because of the, what they say, yeah. then you're in violation. Yeah, that, and that's, uh, I don't know if it was, Justice Thomas that, that uh, actually said, but they said it in the ruling, if you have to read it to, to know what kind of sign it is and regulate it, that's unconstitutional. And uh, funny enough, not necessarily the campaign season sign, but we have, a, uh, we have a resident in the city that put up a dump Trump sign. And as you might imagine, that's very polarizing and has caused quite a few calls ah. into the uh, city council office. And what is the answer to that to query? Free, free, speech. Free, speech. free speech. Free speech, and I'm a proponent of free speech. Uh, also, just so you know, the ones that are in the right-of-ways have to have a permit, and there should be a sticker on them, right? For even the political signs, do you have stickers on those? No. Uh, no. Uh, maybe if it's in a vacant lot, I think. Okay. But uh, on your, in, your, in, in your front yard, the, the big rule is it's got to be on the property. It can't be in the public right-of-way. It is not allowed in the city's public right-of-way. In all seriousness, let's go back. Okay. Yeah. Well, good morning. Good morning. My name is Brenda Edwards, and I'm considering relocating to Port St. Lucie. Today will be my first time actually exploring the city, and I have a couple of hours left after this meeting. What do you suggest I do? Did you have an omelet? Because I want you to be yeah. really energized. You better have lots of protein. Well, welcome. We're, we're really glad that you made it. Do you have family in the area? I do not. No. So I'm you just... You're from Broward? Well, you're going to love it. I moved up from Pembroke Pines. Um, and if, if you like Florida, then you'll love Port St. Lucie because we have the best of Florida for the best value. 
So what I like to, to think of Port St. Lucie as offering Florida lifestyle at best value. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. We still have what makes Florida, Florida. So if you want to see some natural areas, if you like living in the safest large city in Florida, if you like to live in a prospering city that has more businesses forming than other places, a school district that's on the rise, you're, you're, in, the, you're in the right place. Okay. If you like crime, bad traffic, <laughs> unresponsive government, scandals, graft, you should totally stay in South Florida. <laughs> I am so glad our viewership does not extend that far. I didn't name any any uh, by uh, by name, right? I didn't no, I didn't name any no. cities. He didn't specifically. call anybody out. Just the entire area. Yeah, just the whole general. just the whole region. That's who he called out. There's only about 14 million people there. Yeah. You know, a, None of them. Uh, watch Comcast 20 or you we'd have to go to the west coast I, I like to be factually accurate I, you know yeah. well I'm gonna keep her in Port St. Lucie but I would say go check out our Heath uh, the um, Port St. Lucie Botanical Gardens oh, man, I, I, open was, a trap door I, know, I, I almost got shanked there are multiple botanical gardens in, in St. Lucie County though we in all seriousness we are one community yeah and so we, we, check fo out we tradition, flow together maybe and uh, Riverwalk what are you into what do you what Port St. Lucie? Yeah, Port St. Lucie Botanical Gardens. It's right on the river. Right and the when you go there, you'll actually see some construction. And we're, we're working on relocating historic structures that will probably be cultural centers and a waterfront restaurant and a waterfront park there with a boardwalk, a half mile running boardwalk along the St. Lucie, the North Fork of the St. Lucie River. It actually goes under PSL Boulevard. And so we'll have some waterfront restaurants there and everything. Uh, the Savannah State Park. Oh, it's, beautiful. It's special. There's, yeah. there's several different areas that you can explore there. Uh, McCarty Ranch out west is a city preserve that's pretty neat. You want to bring a kayak out there. People really enjoy it. It's a great place. Watch the sunset. Uh, a couple times a year we have an event out there, free horseback riding and bonfire Camping. And, and all that good stuff. Tradition, because it has some great commerce, you know, our Target and all that kind of stuff, oh, which okay. is not far away either. Tradition. Yeah. If you like, I mean, so seriously, baseball. A lot of people love baseball. They follow the Mets, so they love spring training. They like to go to the St. Lucie Mets. It's, it's an inexpensive way to have a great time. There's fireworks. So that's a, that's a regular thing. A lot of, a lot of people get into that. The golf, if you're into, this is the right place if you're into golf or fishing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of outdoor activities. You want to bring uh, friends in and have like, whether it's a girls weekend or a reunion or whatever, we have a club med, the only club med in the continental US. That's, mm -hmm. that's an all-inclusive. All-inclusive. Yeah. yeah, it's an all-inclusive resort. So you get the benefit of kayaks and, and uh, you can go windsurfing and you know all is part of your daily resort fee you can and jump in the pool you can get on the trapeze you want to have some fun get, <laughs> get Charisse that. out there hopefully it won't be like that recent uh, family talent thing what's the name oh, of that show America's Got Talent yeah I heard that that was boom. yeah I heard that that was but she was okay she's okay she's fine right. she got up shook it off she was like yeah. Woof, I'm all good right. Well, it sounds like fun. I, I won't tell anybody in Broward. I'll just keep it to myself. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, if they want to open a business, tell them. Okay. okay. All right. Very good. We had a question here, and then we had a question over there. Just to add to her, I've lived here since I was 12. I'm 49 um, now, and I love this You've city. You've only lived here six years. Yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a beautiful place. My kids went to school here. My grandkids go to school here. I've... I love Port St. Lucie, just so you know. Um, I just wanted to add, I love the color coordination today. Oh, bring, bring we did. Yeah. We're, we're like a regular talk show, aren't we, with our wardrobe and makeup. Happy accident. Right up here in the yellow shirt, Mark. Can you talk about the, I believe it was called Southern Grove, and also the laboratory? I forget what that building is. Yeah. Nope. Well, you, you, no, I call it VGTI because let's keep it real. Lord. That's, uh, you know, that's, that's a little too tactical. It's, it's VGTI until we sell it to an end user. Yes, but we're, I think we're supposed to call it the Florida Center for Biosciences. So the last I heard, there was, a, there was a council meeting, I think, to talk about the offer and if the offer was, I never heard if the offer was accepted or not. On? On the, that, that property. VGTI. VGC. So on VGTI, there's, a, uh, there's actually three letters of intent. One, uh, the city council has responded to and directed staff to work with the proposed buyer on a purchase and sale agreement. Purchase and sale agreement uh, is with RER. 
Uh, that's, that's the name of the company. And it is a very experienced, what I would call a player, uh, someone that has the chops to, to take down a building of this size and then to find the users to fill the building. Mm -hmm. It's a full price offer, but it is an, it is an installment. So there will be a deposit, uh, interest payments over five years with a balloon at the end. Uh, the deposit is, I mean, is more than what we pay to cover the building right now. So it's, it's a positive. And the council was very receptive. It was a 5-0 vote. Uh, as often happens when other people hear that something's gonna come off the market, they make a, a last minute uh, offer. I think, you know, you have to create that sense of urgency, really. Mm -hmm. You really should artificially create the sense of urgency to get the offers all at the same time. What are you gonna do, make people walk through and say, this is perfect, just like you do at an open house? Yes, yes, and we baked cookies too. Yeah, but, yeah, baked yeah. cookies, light candles. So if that sale goes through, will that limit the liability to the town? Well, it. it it uh, reduces our cost basis by all means, uh, but it also kind of locks, locks in the loss. So the, the building originally had about $60 million worth of bonds on it. It's 50 and change right now. The building is valued at 14 and a half. So once we sell it, we'll actually be able to refund the bonds. And just for everybody here, let's just take a step back. You know, the city of Port St. Lucie was incorporated in? It's 61. You can't really have a past mayor answer that question. It's, and a member of the Port St. Not, Historical it's not really, It's not really fair, but she is very knowledgeable. So 61. 1961, and slightly more difficult. How many people lived here in 1970? Like six. Yeah, pretty much. 1980? 12. <laughs> no, about about 15,000. 15, but the point is, is that our growth curve goes like this, right? And... But in the 80s, the community came together and started having the conversation of, you know, we're, we're 15,000, we're going to 30,000, we're gonna to grow to 50,000. I don't know if they knew that how fast they'd get to 189,000 and be the eighth most populous city in Florida. But they started talking about the things that would make a real city. And that's when they started talking about Crosstown Parkway, way back in, in the 80s, right? And then in the 90s, they turned on the tap and the water didn't come out. But that wasn't good. And at the time, the St. Lucie County had taken over the GDC utility. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny sometimes how the county-city relationship works. And uh, the county dared the city to take it, and the city said, okay. And then that's when the utility process started. Uh, Patricia back there and the, our leaders of the time, they had meetings that went to 4 o'clock in the morning. They had bomb threats. They had tents in the parking lot. Pretty crazy, but they, they got through it and they approved our utility. And then in the 2000s, the, the leaders decided that they wanted something more than a bedroom community. And they really started working on the economy. And at the same time, Florida was making the push into biotech under Jeb Bush in the early 2000s. And you know he went off to California to try to lure all the biotechs. And several biotechs were lured to Florida, but at great expense. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't really worked out. And so PSL, unfortunately, is part of that. It's really easy for us in hindsight to criticize the past decisions, and we don't have a time machine, so it is what it is. Our piece of that, our exposure, we have Torrey Pines, when we had VGTI. Torrey Pines building uh, is funded by an impact fee mm -hmm. on new development. So especially when things are booming like now, the impact fee takes care of that. We don't have to subsidize it. On VGTI, the city guaranteed the bonds. They co-signed on the loan. It's like you had a kid, they went bad, now you're paying for their car that they totaled. The building at least is not totaled. So that's kind of, I just wanted to provide that because a lot of people may, maybe hadn't heard that before. So now we have the building, we have the debt. Selling the building actually trips the, uh, the provisions of the bond where we can refinance. Right now we can't refund the bonds, we can't refinance those bonds. Selling the building actually allows us to do that. So we'll get our cost to carry down. We won't pay 1.4 million in carry costs, so that's a very sophisticated building. Costs a lot to maintain, about 1.4 million. So we'll divest ourselves of the, of the 1.4, we'll get cost savings on, on the bond payments, and then we'll be able to use the deposit, the proceeds from the sale, to when we refund the bonds to buy down the balance. So it's, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be close to $2 million a year easy that we're, that we're saving. And that's you know two million that gets put to, to work or given back to you, but 
we're a growing city. We, we need to add police officers to tradition. You know, people are, <laughs> there's, never, there's never an end to the, the demands for service, but that's, that's gonna help a lot. Southern Grove, similarly in the 2000s, uh, the developers, the end developers of St. Lucie West said, hey, why don't we do this a little bigger, a little better in tradition? And if you were here then, they had the Beach Boys kind of wearing shirts like, like yeah. this. And they had to have lottos because the houses were selling so fast. But then the bus came and that bank, Bank Atlantic, the, the money behind and uh, core tradition, they went under. The financer, multinational insurance company, took the paper back on it. And they've, they stepped into the role of developer and they weren't very active, but they paid the bills for several years. But this year, at the height of the recovery, because we'll probably look back and say that like last month was the, the height and now we're, we just don't know it yet. We're, we're gonna have a correction soon. They said, hey, we're gonna exit the market. We're gonna, we wanna sell the residential half of what we call Southern Grove and all of Western Grove. Western Grove is, you familiar with Tradition Parkway, everybody? So where Tradition Parkway dead ends, that's Western Grove. It's called the Development of Regional Impact. It'll all be branded as Tradition most likely. It's called Western Grove DRI. Thousands of units are approved there. Like 5,000, just some round numbers. Let's just say 5,000 dwelling units. Southern Grove is on the south side of Tradition Parkway where the hospital is, Culver's, I don't know if you've had a cement mixer shake on sheet day, it's yeah. pretty good. So that's Southern Grove. So they sold half to Mattamy Homes, largest privately held single family builder in the country, uh, in North America. They're actually Canadians, can't say country, in, in North America. And then the, the east half, the, the part that runs right along I-95, those four running miles, that's our jobs corridor. And, and that was really why the, the city council at the time annexed that property into the city was for that jobs corridor because the, the city wants to develop its economy because they want, they want to be able to work here. And in addition to have that quality of life for living, we want to be able to work here also. So they said, hey, we're going to walk away from this, but we'll give it to you. We said, well, you should give it to us. I mean, if you're going to just walk away, you should at least give it to us and give us some, a few bucks. And, and that's what happened. And we closed on, on that deal last month also. We took title in the name of the Governmental Finance Corporation. It's a, it's a vehicle that we have for owning property and leasing back property. It gives us a little bit more flexibility on some of the rules. And we're now in the role of master developer on that property. Later this year, we're going to have uh, an entity called the Urban Land Institute come in and do a charrette and master planning just to kind of uh, freshen up our master plan, make sure it's in really good shape. And as you might have read, we're going to have a really big meeting on Monday. I mean, this is, it's a huge, it's a blockbuster meeting. So we have several offers for parcels within Southern Grove. And then we also have uh, several economic development deals that'll be revealed uh, Monday projects. night. Yeah. yeah, three. Well, yeah, three. City Electric yeah. and then a couple others. So it'll be a. It is amazing how much building is going on right now in that whole traditions area with Del Webb. And then I noticed there's like new. Have apartment. you seen the. Uh, who, who has seen the, uh, the Great Pyramid of Giza? What there? is that? I keep trying to figure out what that is. Beautiful entrance. That's the entry feature for GL Homes. Okay. So, you know, they're doing their Riverland project. Yep. So you have Madame GL. And then way oh. out, yeah, it's Anska, and you have Del Webb, obviously, that's gone up. If you don't drive tradition on a weekly basis, you're, you're, really, you're really not in tune to, to everything that's going out there. You know, I, I had gone to Wawa at one point, and I hadn't been there in a little while, and I couldn't believe all those buildings were up, the apartments. You've got the apartments that have gone up. You're going to have the veterans nursing home that, that comes in. You have two medical office buildings going up. A little plaza. You'll have City Electric, 400,000 square feet. You have a you have miniature golf going in there. Yes. And the new tax office. Yes, on the on the on the south side. On the, I mean the north, north side. side. North side. North excuse side. me. North yes. side of uh, the landing. Right in front of Christ Fellowship. Our, we had another person that wanted to ask. Her. She left. She didn't make it. She couldn't hang. <laughs> Go ahead with your question. Hello, my name is Arturo Reynoso. Uh, I had a question that pertains to the Cross Town extension. You know, like um, how they're extending it over the swamp area, and then there's US-1, so the US-1 and Crosstown intersection. I'm wondering, like on the, on the right side and the left side, if you're going from Crosstown to US-1 once it's complete, there's some 
there's some empty land. Well, there's there's a bunch of trees there, but I'm wondering if you, uh, the city has any plans on selling them or or anything like that. If you guys have any information on possible selling the trees, it's, it's selling the lots. Oh, the lots. Um, no. Th no. Yes. No. So, not, That's not all state preserve around there. Okay. That's another part of the Savannah State Preserve. Not only do you have the Atlantic Ridge, you'll also have the Aquatic Preserve on the, on the North Fork of the St. Lucie River. So that is all preserve on either side. And uh, the buying opportunities <laughs> would be in the Village Green Light Industrial Area. Now's we, the time to buy. You'll probably, you'll probably see that transform over time with the addition of probably about, about 58,000 trips we're currently forecasting for that intersection. And, just this week, we submitted a grant to the U.S. Department of Transportation to help us with some planning for Village Green Drive. Well, I'd say after 9:30, so we're gonna we're gonna release them. All right, but we'll be happy to go on a deep dive of Port St. Lucie. If you, if you have any more serious questions, obviously I'm a little biased, I'm not an objective third party. No. But thank you so much for being here and uh, every month. Yeah, and I want to thank, um, of course, your team here for filming it and uh, Culinary Village for providing. And your the sponsor. Dish. And my sponsor, my friends, my family, Seacoast, Seacoast National, Seacoast Bank. They don't say national anymore. Seacoast Bank. And thank you to all of you for coming down today, and especially thanks to those who ate breakfast and donated to the great cause. We're going to do it again next month. So next, uh, the second Friday, we'll see everybody here. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Have a great day, everybody.